company behind plans to extract gas in the Loch Allen Basin launched a stinging attack on those opposed to the project. Tambor and Resource Limited says it will proceed with its proposals regardless of calls for the ban on fracking by a number of local authorities. CEO of the company Richard Merman says Tambor will start to employ and train local people in the middle of this year despite what he has described as harassment and intimidation efforts of a small group of anti-fracking, anti-democracy and anti-capitalist protesters. Leah Doherty of the Ard Carn Community Group, who are a member of the No Fracking Ireland Network, joins me now. Leah, firstly, your reaction to Mr Merman's comments. Well, as we've been discussing for some time, Richard Mormon, uh, he's a, a, a trained PR um, kind of consultant for the industry. In fact, he goes around um, at uh, seminars and conferences on how best to um, influence public opinion on fracking and how best to influence politicians, etc. So he's a very hard-working lobbyist for, for the industry. And obviously Richard Mormon is and his company are under serious pressure at the moment. And this is why this diatribe of insults um, has been coming out against the people who are in this campaign, against the local authorities and against um, the ordinary local people in these counties. Because, as we know from going around, we have thousands of signatures to our petition. And at every public meeting, people, once they hear the detail of what hydraulic fracturing is, the dangers it poses to us, our health, um, our environment, our industries, tourism, agriculture, because we know from studies in the States that these have been affected seriously where fracking occurs, that people, once they know the detail, they understand. It's very hard for us because we're in a campaign that obviously to get airtime and to get our message out there because it is detailed and complicated, the dangers around fracking. So, you know, we're, we're up against an industry that will attack us in any way. Um, we know this because it's been done in the States. And we understand from research in the States that um, the lobbying that is going on is, you know, very much exaggerated. They're, they're exaggerating the numbers of jobs. They now have resorted, Mr. Uh, Mormon has resorted to calling us anti, anti, anti this. We're full, our campaign are, is full of farmers, teachers, uh, local business owners, uh, people working in the tourism industry. We're pro-business, pro-development, of course pro-industry, but, uh, you know, we're not for this industry because it is highly, highly dangerous to our water. It is proven to pollute aquifers in America. It is proven to pollute um, domestic water supplies, and it has proven to have a rise in cancers and various other illnesses where it is uh, practiced. So what we are saying to people is, you know, or Mr. Mormon, you know, we won't be fooled or bullied or threatened into, you know, allowing him to come in and make his money at the cost of our health and our environment. And we know that the Bulgarians only last week have uh, secured a ban in their country. The French have a ban. Parts of Canada, uh, states in America have a ban. And so, you know, if it's not good for any of these places, it's not good enough for the people of the northwest of Ireland. And the people know that. We won't be fooled into, um, you know, this our campaign being discredited by Richard Mormon um, in such a manner. You know, Eamon O'Keefe only came out last week in the Dáil and said he regretted that his government ever handed out these licences because of all the risks that are involved in this. Also, Dennis Nocton, TD in Roscommon, has also said the same thing. The risks are too high. Duncan Stewart, um, as we know of, as a very good yes. environmentalist, also signed our petition last week and said the precautionary principle must be put in place with regards to fracking. So really, our debate with Mr. Mormon is over. This, you know, we understand he will use whatever tactic he can to try and convince local communities. That's his job. He's highly paid for it. We are slowly but surely getting the information out there. People are understanding that this is wrong. It's not right for us. We are for protecting what the indigenous industries that we have and building on them. And so, you know, we're calling now on the government, Pat Rabbit. There's only one choice here, as we've seen what's happened in other places, that he has to take in the evidence that's coming from scientific research, from, in, from universities 
uh, uh, all over America, in the UK as well, that are saying the risks involved in this industry, it's a dirty industry, they're too high, it cannot go ahead with the technology that they have at the moment. Maybe 15, 20 years' time they can come back and say, look, we have a new technology, it's done differently now. Well, that's far down in the future. As it stands at the moment, fracking is a highly dangerous, dirty industry yeah. that, that will that will only... Um, deteriorate our good industries that we have here at the moment. Okay, now Mr. Merman would argue that the Gasland movie kind of um, dramatizes this whole, it's the worst case scenario. But there has been substantial studies on this, and as you said, it has been banned in other countries. So there has to be something to it. Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, we know from very respected scientists in the States have come out and said, look, uh, they've researched this. And they've researched it through various different avenues. Um, the water pollution, where it, it's irreversible pollution. Not only the chemicals that they use in pumping down, but there are already highly toxic radioactive chemicals down there, radon, uh, barium, uranium, and these are mobilized through this process. This process causes earthquakes, for God's sake. And when we know that happens, there's serious risks. Or the water in this whole region, the Shannon Basin, is absolutely invaluable, not only to the people of the Northwest, to this country. This is an all, this is an all Ireland debate, really. And, you know, uh, it, we damage this and there is no going back. Now, what you said about Eamon O'Keefe saying, you know, he regretted last week um, issuing these exploratory licences, but th was that because he started the ball rolling or because, they, I, as I'm aware, the exploratory uh, part of this process has no harmful? Well, you see, obviously what Eamon O'Keefe was saying was, you know, that these companies are now in a process in Ireland, you know, where inevitably, if this government and Pat Rabbit do not listen to us listen to the scientific evidence, and in fact, ignore it. If, if it's being ignored, if it is going to continue to be ignored, then we are going to end up with, as Richard Mormon said, drilling. Yes, of course, he's, he's trying to now confuse us and say, look, it's a small part in North Leitrim and in Fermanagh, when, of course, they're just the initial drills. And, and he's moving very quickly on to this next phase of, of initial drills, especially in Fermanagh. And what we're saying is, this is the foot in the door. I was speaking to a professor last week, um, Kevin Whelan, who has written a book on Irish landscapes. Mm -hmm. And he said that the people of the Northwest have done an amazing campaign so far in getting public opinion to understand the threats around this. And he said, do not let these people get their foot in the door, because that is the stepping stone. Mm -hmm. So our argument is no longer with Richard Mormon. He has... Uh, he proven himself to be um, inconsistent in his figures around everything, in his plans. Um, he's now trying to convince us that it's only going to be in a small area in now, Fermanagh. So were you Lincoln. saying, like last week, what Richard Merman said, like they were pulling out a Sligo on West Calvin because it wasn't viable? Do you think yeah. it's that accurate then? Well, I find that very hard to believe. We know that these studies around this area where shale gas is, um, shale rock is, is a wide, it covers hundreds of thousands of acres. When Mr. Mormon came out first, he said, look, um, there'll be hundreds of wells around this area. He said, you know, we plan to have a drill pad every two to four kilometres. You see, he knows his back is against the wall now. He knows public opinion is against him, so he's trying to confuse us. He's trying to say this will be a small area in North Leitrim and in Fermanagh, when in fact, this, if fracking starts, it's the nature of the industry that it covers a wide area. It is extensive, it is intensive, it is the industrialization of the area. And this will spread to wherever Shale Rock is. And if anyone wants to find out, the licenses um, that were handed out, the map area is there. This covers a wide area down in Clare as well. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of acres. If we let these people in, even test drills, that's saying that, oh, we don't have the evidence already, so we can let this process keep going on. We have the evidence. Pat Rabbit has no choice in this but to follow suit with other countries and have it banned. Otherwise, he is ignoring independent evidence. You see, it, we're dealing with a very um, kind of... It, the industry that the oil and gas industry is, um, it's... it's it's, you know, very cutting. They will, they have geologists working for them. They have environmental scientists. A lot of these people are bought up, work in the industry, and can come out because they have vested interests. 
these other people who are doing independent scientific research are, do, have no vested interest. The ordinary people of America are crying out about this because of the domestic water. They can't use it. They're buying in water. They can't shower. They can't wash their clothes. They can't feed their animals. Um, so this is a massive problem. You know, as Duncan Stewart said when he signed our petition, the precautionary principle has to be put in place. The evidence is already there, and we're waiting on Pat Rabbit to stand up with this. Stop telling us this old line that, look, no license has been given for drilling yet. Stop going on about this. We can't. We don't want to be campaigning on this. We want to be getting on with our lives and our daily work, but this threat is looming day by day over our heads. In the, all people all throughout the Northwest and down in the Southwest, the government now have to make a stand. The EPA supposedly are coming out next month with their report. Their report can state nothing only that these risks are real, they're, they're severe. I mean, if, if, if we don't protect the health of our children, then what are we protecting in this country? What are we doing? So, I mean, there is no choice for this government. It has to ban hydraulic fracturing as it is, and, and we have to protect our environment and protect the health of the people of the North West. OK, Lee, you're Doherty, a member of the No Frack in Ireland Network there. If there's anything you want highlighted on the News at One programme or on our news bulletins, for that matter, feel free to contact us on, by phone at our newsroom on 047 72